you won't believe these 32 high-end home decor dupes, thrift flips, trash to treasure, and decor DIYs were done on a tight budget and easy enough that anyone can do. Let's get started with number one. My inspiration piece is from Etsy. I absolutely loved this pillow covering. It is so beautiful, so high-end. I loved the blue leaves on it. What I didn't love was the price of $48.99. I know that we can make one that's similar for less. So we already have our pillow covering, now we need to make some leaves. I was at Hobby Lobby and all of the ribbon was 40% off and I came across this velvet ribbon. I love the gorgeous shade of blue. We are going to be using this ribbon to create our leaves. So what I needed was a pattern. So I created a leaf pattern on Canva and I simply printed it off. If you want to use this pattern, you can. I will leave a link to the free printable in my description box. So all I did was I cut out the leaves and the stem and then I flipped my ribbon over and I put my pattern over the top. Then I got a pencil and I traced out the leaves and the stem. Then I took my fabric scissors and I cut everything out. I will say cutting out a lot of these leaves was really time consuming. So put on some fun music or put my videos on in the background so you can listen to them and watch them while you cut out these leaves. Once everything was cut out, I arranged them over the top of my pillow covering. I made sure that everything was in the right place and that I liked the design. I'm going to adhere the ribbon leaves to the pillow covering with some fabric glue. I got this at Hobby Lobby and all I did was I added the fabric glue to the back of the leaves and the stems and I just pressed it firmly to the pillow covering. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the leaves are really well adhered, so add a bunch of this glue because you want everything to stick well. Once everything was glued down, I let it dry overnight. I filled my pillow covering with a down pillow insert that I already had. It just slipped it right inside and we are done, you guys. Look at how beautiful this pillow covering is. It looks so expensive, so high-end. I love the velvet leaves and stems. They look so luxurious. I think our pillow covering looks so similar to our Inspiration Piece pillow covering, but they are not similar in price. If you remember, our Inspiration pillow covering was $48.99. So I'm gonna calculate all the costs that went into creating my pillow covering and it came to a grand total of $10.24. I think that that is such a steal for how gorgeous this is. And what I'm gonna do with this pillow is I'm gonna put it smack dab in the center of the pillows on my bed. It definitely elevates the luxurious look of my bedding. This was easy and affordable to do. I was browsing through all the wall art on the Paragold website and I came across this gorgeous cascading floral wall art. These flowers are in a shadow box frame. It is simply stunning, but the price is stunning as well. Can you see that it's $1,338? Yeah, that's gonna be too much for me. So we are going to dupe it for much less. This time we are going to be using this shadow box frame that I purchased from Ikea. The size is really great. It's a 50 by 50 centimeter. It's also the right color, so I knew it would be perfect for this project. Now we need some flowers to go inside. I was at Hobby Lobby and I went down the dried floral section and I came across these beautiful white flowers. They're the perfect size, the perfect color, and I love the way they look. I got two different sizes of these flowers and I was in luck because that day all of the florals at Hobby Lobby were 40% off. These flowers are so cool. They're not wood, they're almost like foam, which is gonna be great in a shadow box because it's gonna hold its shape really well. Okay, so next we need a mat to go in the back of our shadow box. I was in the clearance section at Hobby Lobby and I came across these giant pieces of mat I found one that was cream, which is going to be perfect for the color scheme, and the price was right at $3.74. Now we have all of our items. So the first thing we need to do is remove everything from our shadow box. 
Then I took the paper that was inside of the frame. I'm going to be using this as a template so I can get the correct size square for my mat. And then traced out the correct size with the pencil. I got a rotary cutter and I cut the square out with the rotary cutter. Now I have the exact size that I need to put inside my frame. Next, I'm gonna take my flowers. What I need to do is cut the flowers away from this wood stem. So I got some floral cutters and I simply just snipped all of the flowers away from the stem. I did this with the large ones and the small ones and spread them out. I did a dry run with the flowers first. I placed them on top of my mat and I arranged them just the way that I wanted them to be so they were in the right spot before I glued them down permanently. To adhere the flowers to my mat, I'm going to be using some hot glue. I simply took the hot glue and I put it on the back of the flowers and then pressed them to the mat. I tried to mimic my inspiration art piece by putting several flowers in close proximity at the top and then spread out the flowers further as I got down to the bottom of the mat. I did this with all of my flowers until I was satisfied with the way that it looked. Now it's time to put everything back inside the shadow box. But before we do that, I need to remove the plastic coating that's on the plexiglass. Once that was off, I could put it back in the shadow box and then place my dried floral art inside. And finally, I replaced the backing. Now that we're done, I put it on top of my fireplace mantle. I love the way that this looks, you guys. It looks so high-end, so expensive. I love the monochromatic flowers and the shadow box frame, how they coordinate so beautifully together. You could use this in so many different areas of your home. I think it looks very similar to our inspiration piece. However, I have to say I do like mine better. I like the contrast between the cream flowers and the white frame. And I believe that my flowers look more realistic. Mine is a little bit smaller than the Perigold one, but if you remember, theirs cost $1,338. And after calculating all of the costs that went into creating my floral shadow box art, it was $39.83. That's a huge savings of our inspiration piece. I love the way my cascading floral art turned out and we recreated it for a very affordable price. We are going to stick with the Paragold website and we are going to dupe another one of their very expensive high-end pieces. This time it's going to be this handmade ceramic jar. The blue, white, and gold is stunning and I love the way that the paint is marbled. While I was at Ikea, I came across this plain old ceramic pot. I thought it was going to be perfect as far as size and shape goes. So I scooped it up. So now we have the center jar part. We need to find a lid and a base. So while I was at Hobby Lobby, I headed over to their wood rounds. I've used these several times before and I picked up a package of two small wood rounds and then I moved over and I found one that was just one size up and I picked up that wood round as well. The detail around these wood rounds are going to be perfect for our jar because it adds a little bit of flair. The knob that we're going to be using on our lid is actually one of those doll heads that I have used in previous videos. They are from Michaels and I had some left over. Now that I have everything, it's time to paint. We're gonna start off by painting the lid wood round and the actual ceramic pot itself. I'm gonna be painting them in some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. You may be wondering why I'm painting the container since it's already white, but I want these two whites to match. The IKEA container is a little off white, so painting it will make everything cohesive. Once everything was coated in the white spray paint, I let them both dry for one hour. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I love to hydro dip and this project was screaming out for a hydro dip technique. So we are going to do that. What I did was I got a container, just a large bucket, and I lined it with a garbage sack, and then I filled it almost to the top with water. The reason why I'm adding a garbage sack to my bucket is for ease of cleanup afterwards, and also because the paint, the leftover paint, will stick to the garbage sack and not to my bucket. All right, so now that everything is prepped, we are going to get our paint. I'm going to be using the white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint, but also 
a Krylon paint plus primer in the color royal blue. What I'm gonna do is spray this paint into the water in two second increments. So I sprayed the white for two seconds and then the blue for two seconds and then the white and the blue and the white and the blue until it formed a bullseye. I did this probably 20 times. That way I had a really great marbling effect. Once I had enough paint in there, I took my gloved hand and just swirled it around. Then I got my ceramic pot and I dipped it into the paint. The paint will cling to the container or whatever object you put into the paint. Once the paint had coated the entire container, I pulled it out. I love the swirls on this. It is unique and one of a kind. I repeated this process for the lid. I just simply sprayed the white and the blue paint in alternating colors. Then I took my lid and I dipped it into the paint, pulled it out. Look at how cool that swirl is, that bullseye is on the top of the lid. It looks so cool. This painting technique worked beautifully for this project. Once both of my pieces were coated in the paint, I let them dry for one hour. Now we need to paint the base and the lid and we're gonna do that with some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I painted both of them so they were 100% coated in the spray paint. Once they were fully coated, I let them dry for one hour. After my lid was dry, I took some blue painter's tape and I put it around the edge and then I got a styrofoam plate and put that over the top. The reason why we're doing that is because we need to paint the circumference in the same gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. So I painted that right around the edge of the lid. Once it was coated in the spray paint, I let it dry for one hour. Now that everything is painted, it's time to assemble our decorative jar. I'm going to be using some E6000. I put the E6000 on the top of the wood base. I made sure that there was a lot of the E6000 all over the surface, and then I placed my container over the top and then I took the knob and I added some E6000 to the bottom of the knob and I put it directly in the center of the wood round lid. Then I let both of these pieces dry overnight. Now all I need to do is take the lid and pop it right over the top of my decorative jar. Look at how awesome this jar looks, you guys. Look at how unique. I love the painting technique. Check out the lid. Wow. I... Had so much fun making this too. And can you believe that this started out as a ceramic pot from Ikea? I love the way that it's been transformed. It looks so similar to our inspiration piece, but it was so much cheaper to make. Do you remember how much our inspiration piece cost? It was $145. After calculating all the costs that went into creating my beautiful decorative jar, it is $19.49. That's a great deal. We saved so much money. It looks beautiful, unique, one of a kind. I'm so happy with the way my recreation turned out. I don't know if you've noticed, but the color palette today is blue and white. I didn't even do it on purpose. It just happened to be that way. So since our first three projects have been blue and white, we're gonna stick to that same color scheme. And our next dupe is going to be a blue and white floral arrangement. I found this one on the Wayfair website and it comes in at the price of $82.99. That's a lot. And I know that we can make one for so much less. So the first thing that we need to do is get a container. Target has some great containers. They have a big variety. So I bought one there. Some of the florals that we are going to be using are from Ikea. They have a huge variety of florals there, plants and all kinds of flowers. So I picked up some white ones there. And the other flowers that I'm going to be using are from the Dollar Tree and just other ones that I have in my stash at home. So the first thing we need to do is create a tape grid. I got some tape and I made two lines horizontally and two lines vertically across the top of my container. Now I'm simply going to take my flowers and put them in the same location as the flowers in our inspiration piece. This is an easy way to recreate a floral arrangement, especially if you're a novice floral arranger. All you need to do is find an inspiration piece and copy the placement of the florals. You guys, I love the way that this floral arrangement turned out. It was so easy to do. 
This took me maybe 20 minutes to put together in total. My floral arrangement looks so similar to the Wayfair floral arrangement, but mine came in at a fraction of the cost. The Wayfair arrangement was $82.99. After calculating the cost of my floral arrangement, it came to a grand total of $20. This looks so pretty on my nightstand and it ties the rest of the blue and white that I have in my room together. And as a bonus, in the future, I can take these florals out and use them in another project and use this vase in another project as well. So this is a very versatile arrangement. Floral arrangements are perfect in home decor because they can bring in a color scheme, they can add freshness and vibrance to a room while also adding an elegant touch of the outdoors. I love the way that my room looks now with all of these duped pieces in here. I love the blue and white color scheme. It adds a little bit of a pop of color in here. All of our pieces look so classy, so elegant. We were able to recreate so many pieces for a fraction of the price that we would have spent if we would have purchased them online. Another item that I found at my thrift store that I absolutely loved was this metal container. I loved the size of it and the cutouts were so cool. And of course, you gotta love the price of $4.99. So I scooped it up and brought it home. What I do not love about this piece is the color. It's too dark, so we're gonna brighten it up. So I took this container outside and I sprayed it in some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the entire outside of this container was painted in the spray paint and the inside. Once everything was 100% coated in the spray paint, I let it dry for one hour. This piece already looks a hundred times better, but we are going to take it a little bit further and we're gonna add some additional details to our container. There's a raised line that goes around the entire circumference of this container. And so we are going to paint it in some metallic champagne gold paint. I got a paintbrush and a piece of copy paper just to make sure I didn't go over the line. And I painted this line that went around the entire circumference of this container. Once it was done, I let it dry for a couple hours. One more detail that we are going to add is feet. So when I was at Michael's, they had these little wooden rounds. They are doll heads, which is a little odd, but they work beautifully when you need feet because it has a flat top and the rest is round. Another great thing is that all regular priced items were 30% off, so we got them for a great price. So I took these wooden rounds outside and I sprayed them in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. Once they were 100% coated in this spray paint, I let them dry for an hour. Now these are really gold right now and I want them to coordinate with the champagne gold that we added on the line. So what I did was I got a paintbrush and I added just one coat of this metallic champagne gold to the feet. That way it toned down the gold just a little bit and it also helps to color coordinate the feet and the line together. Once they were painted, I let them dry for an hour. Now it's time to attach the feet to my container. So I flipped it upside down and I got some E6000. I added the E6000 to the wood feet and I placed all of these wood feet on the bottom of the container and I spaced them out evenly. Once they were in place, I let them dry overnight. Look at how pretty this container is now, you guys. It is gorgeous. I knew it had potential when I saw it at the thrift store. To beautify it even further, we're gonna add some flowers into our container. But first up, we've gotta create our tape grid. So I added a few lines of tape horizontally and vertically across the top of the container. And then I gathered up my flowers. This time we're going to be using some wisteria and some peonies. I added these wisteria bunches to my container first. I love the way the wisteria just drapes. Oh, it's just so pretty. And I think it's perfect for this time of year. It's just whimsical and really bright and cheerful. 
And then I took my peony stems and I added those to the container as well. I wanted a large flower arrangement and that is exactly what we ended up with. I'm going to place it right here on my mantle. It fits perfectly because the container is long and thin. It fits right on top of my mantle and I love the flowers. They are again just bright, cheerful, but they look so classy. With the additional gold feet and gold line around this container, it makes it look high end. The cutouts give this container so much personality. It looks very custom. And can you believe that we purchased it for $4.99? What a bargain. With a little creativity, we were able to transform this into a classy, elegant, expensive looking piece of decor. Last week, I swapped out my chandelier in my bedroom. There was a fan in there, it was dark and dated, but we are going to take that fan and we are gonna transform it into pieces that will be unrecognizable. So the first thing we need to do is take apart this fan. I got my screwdriver out and I went to work. I disassembled all the individual pieces from the fan. Once everything was disassembled, I laid it all out and I put on my creative thinking cap and started playing a little bit of mix and match. And I put some pieces together and mixed a couple different ones until I came up with a plan. Our first trash to treasure transformation is going to begin with these pieces here. We are going to be creating a stunning container. Now, like I said, these are the pieces that we're gonna use from the fan but I needed a sturdy base. Last week in my Look For Less dupes, my ginger jars needed a base to go on the bottom. So I found these wood rounds at Hobby Lobby. So I knew that they were there. I headed back over to Hobby Lobby and I found some similar wood rounds. These are larger. I love the detail on them and they come in at a great price of only $3.49. Now I have all of the mismatched pieces that I need to create my container. So what I did was I put that wood round down first. Then I took the first intricately detailed piece from the fan. I added E6000 along the bottom rim of this piece. And then I placed it firmly in the center of my wood round. Next, I took a circular piece from the fan. Again, I added some E6000 to it around the circumference, and then I put it over the top of the decorative piece. Now, I did get some hot glue and run it along the rim of this piece. The reason being is because I didn't want it to slide around while the E6000 was drying. The hot glue will hold it temporarily, and the E6000 will solidify these pieces together long term. And finally, I added some E6000 to this circular piece, followed by some more hot glue. Then I took my frosted glass bowl from the light fixture and placed it directly into the glue. After all my pieces were in place, I let the E6000 dry for 24 hours. Because this container is a mixture of wood, metal, and several textures, we need to bring everything together and make it cohesive. We're gonna do that with some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I took my container outside and I sprayed it in the spray paint. I made sure that the entire container was covered in this white spray paint. I got underneath the bowl. I made sure that all the decorative pieces were painted and then I let this first coat dry for one hour. It definitely needed a second coat, so I came back and I did the exact same thing. I sprayed the entire container in the second coat of paint. Once I achieved the look that I was going for, I let it dry for three hours. One thing that I knew would really bother me long term was that there was a gap in between the metal decorative piece and the wood base. So that just would have bothered me. <laughs> We've got to take care of that right now. We're gonna do it with some all-purpose caulk. What I did was I ran a bead of this caulk right in that gap and I wiped it so it was stuck right in there and then afterwards I got a damp cloth and I wiped off the excess caulk. Now we have a beautiful cohesive piece. All right, you guys, let's take a moment and just admire how beautiful 
this container is. Can you believe it started out as a light fixture that was dark and dated? And all we did was reimagine it into something that in my opinion is much better. It definitely looks like a high-end piece of beautiful home decor. So now that we have our container, let's add some flowers to the center. I have a whole bunch of cream flowers, cream and white flowers. I wanted to keep it neutral. And so these are the flowers that we're going to be using. Now we're gonna create a tape grid. Of course, you guys know I love creating tape grids. So I got some scotch tape and I made a few lines horizontally and vertically across the top of this container. Now I can take my flowers and what I did in order to get them the height that I want was I bent the stem and I placed them inside of this container. I'm using some peonies, some hydrangea, a few magnolia flowers, a large variety of different types of cream flowers. Once all of my flowers were in the correct spot, I got some gold leaves and I added those in the arrangement for a pop of color and an elegant accent. All right, you guys, look at how beautiful this flower arrangement is. How stunning is this? Look at how big it is. It's huge. And we started off with a light fixture that was going to be thrown away or donated, but we decided to give it new life so if you have some random pieces laying around your house that you just don't know what to do about, see if you can transform it into something that is more your style. To me, this is a classic piece. It's a timeless piece, and it came a long way from being a dark dated fan in my bedroom. Our next thrift flip involves this $2.99 container that I purchased at the thrift store. This container is actually two pieces. There's a smaller container inside of a larger container. I'm guessing that you could put something down below or around the edges to beautify it. So what we're gonna do today is we are going to take the smaller container out of the larger container and we are going to transform the larger container. Right now, it is a pretty sad plastic container, but it's going to be unrecognizable when we are finished with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is wrap the outside in some copy paper and blue painter's tape. Stick with me, <laughs> we're gonna be painting the inside of this container. So what I'm gonna do is take this outside and spray just the inside in this gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the inside of this container was completely covered in this gold spray paint and then I let it dry for one hour. While the paint was drying, I thought this would be a great time to create a botanical design in my Cricut design space. I had my Cricut maker cut out this design on some removable vinyl. So now I have my design and the paint is dry. So what I'm gonna do is simply remove the copy paper and the blue painter's tape, and then I'm going to put these botanical vinyl pieces on the outside of my container. I made these botanicals in a variety of different sizes and I put them sporadically throughout the outside of this container. Now I'm going to take my container back outside and this time I need to protect the inside of my container. So I got a paper plate and I popped that right over the top. And then I got some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint and I painted the outside of the container. I made sure the container was completely covered in the spray paint and then I let it dry for two hours. I wanted this to be completely dry before we removed the removable vinyl. So once it was dry, it was so easy to peel those pieces away from this container. And what it revealed behind was the gold paint that we painted on the inside of the container earlier. I continued to remove all of the vinyl from the container which provided a beautiful, natural botanical design. If you don't have a vinyl cutter, there are so many other options that you can use. You can pick up some stickers from the Dollar Tree or Michaels. You could use a stencil and put that on the outside, spray it and then remove the stencil to create a design. There's a lot of options. So don't feel like you need to have a vinyl cutter in order to do this project. 
but already you guys look at how stunning this transformation was it was so easy it involved minimal steps and it was super affordable to beautify it even further what we're going to do is add some flowers to the inner container so again we're going to start off with that tape grid i put a few lines vertically and horizontally over the top this time i'm going to go with some pink toned flowers I grabbed a bunch of these beautiful peonies. Of course, I bent the stem to get it the right size. And then I placed all of these gorgeous flowers into this inner container. Once my flowers were in place, I just picked up that container and placed it right inside of the decorative container. And here we go. Here is the final look. Can you guys believe that we purchased this container for $2.99 at the thrift store? Look at it now. It doesn't even resemble what it was originally. The detail around the outside of this container is so cool. And to think that we did it just with paint. Paint on the inside, a decal, and paint on the outside. So if you find some dull pieces, but they are affordable, you can always transform them into something magical. Our next thrift flip involves this glass bowl. It was hiding on a shelf at my thrift store and luckily for me, I found it. I loved the size, the shape, and the price of $2.99. It's pretty dirty, but that's an easy fix. Believe it or not, we are going to turn this glass bowl into a decorative jar. And every jar needs a lid. So while I was at Hobby Lobby, I actually picked up two of these wood rounds, this piece and one of the cast off metal pieces from our fan are going to be transformed into our lid. So I took these two pieces outside and I sprayed them in the same white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint that we've used previously. I made sure that the wood round was coated in the white spray paint as well as the decorative metal piece. I made sure that they were completely saturated in the spray paint, and then I let them dry for one hour. Now that they're dry, we are going to beautify the top of the wood round instead of just leave it plain white. Hobby Lobby has such a huge variety of scrapbook paper there. They have an entire row. I selected this white and gold floral scrapbook paper it is so, so pretty. I love the gold sheen that it has on it. What we're gonna do is we are going to Mod Podge this scrapbook paper to the top of our wood round. So I took my wood round and I put it over the top of the paper and then I traced around it. Then I cut it out and the circle fit beautifully over the top of my wood round. Next, I took my Mod Podge and a sponge brush and I added a liberal amount of this Mod Podge to the top of the wood round. And then I took my paper and placed it over the top of the Mod Podge. I got a kitchen scraper and I pressed it firmly to the paper. Doing this will get any air bubbles that are potentially trapped underneath the paper out and it will help it to lay flat. Then I took some more Mod Podge and I put it over the top of the scrapbook paper. I made sure that there was a lot of Mod Podge over the top. That way it was well protected. Once it was completely covered in the Mod Podge, I let it dry for two hours. Now we're gonna take that decorative topper and place it right in the center. So I got some E6000 and I ran a line of this glue all along the bottom portion of this decorative topper. Then I placed it firmly in the center of the wood round right on top of our beautiful Mod Podge decorative floral paper. Then I let it dry overnight. This lid is so, so pretty. Look at that. This was a wood round, wood round, scrapbook paper, cast off light fixture piece. <laughs> and look at how gorgeous this lid is. So what we're gonna do with this lid is place it right over the top of our thrifted container. It fits on there so nicely and now we have a gorgeous jar. Now I'm going to place some cookies inside of my jar. I stacked them up so they were so pretty. 
Now, this is not going to last because I have children in my home and they are going to make short work of these cookies in about five seconds flat. So let's enjoy how beautiful these cookies are stacked up right now. They look so pretty in our jar. However, there is a variety of things that you can add to a container like this, to our jar. You could put some bath bombs in it and put it in your bathroom. You could put in some of your favorite keepsakes or some decorative pieces and put this on a shelf. And of course, you can take this lid right back off and it can be a glass bowl that you could put all kinds of things in. So this is such a versatile piece that we got for so cheap. This surflip was affordable, it was easy to do, and it was created out of pieces that most people think had a little to no value. Today we are duping high-end decor from the Pottery Barn with much less expensive pieces from the thrift store. I had a request from one of my fabulous subscribers to make a wall art piece similar to the one that I found on the Pottery Barn website. It is this palm leaf shadow box wall art. This is such a cool piece of art. It would go with a lot of different styles and designs. I love the size, however, it is $399, which is quite expensive and I know that we can recreate it for less. So the first thing that we need is a frame. I headed to my local thrift store. They always have such an amazing variety of frames there. I found one that had a thin frame and it was square. It was the perfect size and shape. And the best part is that it was only $5.99. What we want to use is the frame and not the art that's inside. So we're gonna remove the art and the mat from the frame and then I carefully lifted out the glass so that we were left with just the frame only. I don't know how long it was at the thrift store, so I washed it with a damp cloth to make sure it was nice and clean, so when we spray paint it, the paint will adhere to the frame. I'm going to be using some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint to paint our frame white. I took it outside and I sprayed it in the spray paint I made sure that the entire frame was covered in the spray paint. I did the front, the sides, and painted the inside of the frame as well to make sure it was all one cohesive color. Once it was completely coated in the paint, I let it dry for two hours. While the paint is drying, this is the perfect time for us to get started on our palm leaf. We are going to make ours out of some poster board. I picked up mine at Target. They were only 99 cents, which is cheaper than in the Dollar Tree, so that's a great place to get your poster board. What I'm gonna do with my poster board is cut strips out of it. So I got my self-healing mat and I put my poster board over the top. Then I got a pencil and a ruler and I marked out one and a half inch wide segments. Then I got my rotary cutter and I cut the poster board into strips. One poster board was large enough to give me all the pieces that I needed to create this palm art. Once I had all the poster board strips, I cut them into various lengths. I did a seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11 inch long strips. Once all of these segments were cut, I folded them in half. Then I cut the top with scissors into points. I repeated this process with all of my poster board pieces. Now it's time to create our fan. So I took the smallest seven inch segment first. I put some hot glue in the center, pressed it together, and then I put some hot glue on the outside. Then I took my second folded segment of poster board and pressed it firmly to the first segment. I repeated the process of hot gluing the inside and the outside of the folded poster board pieces in ascending order until I had half of the fan hot glued and connected together. Then I got started on the second half of the fan. Again, I took the shortest seven inch segment first. I put some hot glue on it, and then I just hot glued all of the other poster board pieces together. This time I divided it up into three different segments. That way when I put it all together, I could move everything around and make sure that it was all nice and evenly fanned out. We need to create a background that's similar to our inspiration piece background. 
I have this fabric, it's leftover fabric. It's actually from my dining chairs and it is the perfect match to our inspiration piece. So what I'm gonna do with my fabric is put it over the self-healing mat and then take the back of the frame and place that over my fabric. Then I got a ruler and my rotary cutter and I simply just cut around the backing of the frame. This will give me a perfect square that will fit right on top of the backing. Once my square was cut out, I got some hot glue and I put it along the edge of the backing. I kept the hot glue to the edges, that way we didn't have any lumps or bumps in the center of the fabric. I continued to add the hot glue to the edges and then pressed the fabric into the hot glue. Now it's time to adhere the fan to the fabric. So what I did was I just took some hot glue and I put it on the back of the first half of the fan and then I pressed it firmly to the fabric. I added a bunch of hot glue in various places on the backing of the fan. You don't want this to move around, you want it to be stable. So adding a decent amount of hot glue will hold everything in place. Then I took the additional segments for the other side of the fan and added the hot glue to the back of those and placed them in the right spots to create the other half of my fan. I did cut some additional segments of poster board for filler just in case I needed it. So I did add a couple extra little fan pieces in there to make my palm leaf look nice and full. Now that the palm leaf is in place, we need to add a stem. So I just cut a rectangle and just rounded the top, got some hot glue, added it to the back and pressed it to the fan. Now in my inspiration piece, if you zoom in really close, you can see there's like some frayed pieces of either fabric or paper. So in order to recreate that, what I'm gonna do is get some cotton balls and I'm just gonna pull them apart, add a little bit of hot glue to the fan and then put the cotton ball right over the top. I think that this mimics our inspiration piece fantastically. Plus as a bonus, it is hiding all of the places where the fans are connected. You never wanna see the mechanics of how everything is stuck together. So these cotton ball pieces are a great way to hide all of that. Now that our palm leaf art is done, all we need to do is put it right back into the frame. I flip my frame over and put our art right back in the center. One thing that we are not going to be doing is putting the glass back over the front. We don't have the space for it because of the 3D palm leaf. Our inspiration piece was a shadow box. Ours is just going to be an open frame. We will have our 3D palm art stick out which is just fine for me. I actually really like it this way. So that is one liberty that we are going to take over our inspiration piece. And that's it, we are done. Look at how fantastic this palm art looks compared to our inspiration piece. I think they look so similar. They're similar in size, the leaves are the same, the backing's the same. I just really love the way that this turned out. And the best part is finding out the price differentiation from our inspiration piece to what I made. So let's calculate my expenses. In total, it cost me $14 to create my palm leaf wall art. I think that that is a steal. Finding the frame from the thrift store was a great jumping off point to create our wall art. For $5.99, it kept everything in budget. Using the poster board was cost efficient and all the other little pieces didn't add up to much. So if you think you can't get a high-end piece of wall art, you can head to your thrift store. That's a great place to start. Cake stands are one of those items that I could never get enough of. So when I saw this beautiful cake stand on the Pottery Barn website, I knew I really wanted to dupe it. This is a Mason stoneware cake stand. It's classic, beautiful, and would be perfect for any party. The price of this cake stand is $59, and I know that we can recreate one for so much less. At my thrift store, they have this section that has chargers and trays and dishware. I found this wood charger that was the perfect size and shape, and it was only $3.99. So now we have the top of our cake stand. We just need to find a base. I had a hard time 
trying to find one that mimicked exactly our inspiration piece. But while I was at Hobby Lobby, I headed over to the vase section and I found a terracotta pot that didn't have a raised edge around the top. It was sleek, clean, it was the right shape. It was perfect for our base. Now I've got both pieces of my cake stand. So I'm gonna take them outside and I'm gonna spray them in the white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure the top and the sides of the terracotta pot were completely covered in this paint. And then I moved on to the wood charger. I spray painted the top and the sides of this charger. Once everything was well coated in the white spray paint, I let these pieces dry for two hours. After two hours, I came back and I flipped everything over so I could do the opposite side. I sprayed the inside of the terracotta pot and then I also sprayed the underside of the wood charger. Once these pieces were completely coated in the paint, I let them dry for another hour. Now all we need to do is adhere these two pieces together. I added some E6000 to our terracotta pot and then placed our wood charger in the center. Once my two pieces were in place, I let them dry overnight. Occasionally, I like to add a protective coating over the top, and I know I'm gonna be using this cake stand frequently, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to spray it in a protective coating. So what I'm gonna be use is this Krylon Satin Finish Permanent Protective Finish. So I took my cake stand back outside and I sprayed it in this protective finish. Once I was finished spraying the protective coating on the cake stand, I let it dry for another hour. And that's it, you guys. We are finished with our Pottery Barn Dupe cake stand. Look at how fantastic this cake stand looks. I love using versatile pieces like this. You can use a cake stand like this for displaying decorative objects, a candle. Of course, you can use it to display your beautiful food. You can put a cloche over the top. I love having multi-purpose pieces of home decor. They are great on your budget. And I think that my cake stand looks almost identical to our Inspiration Pottery Barn cake stand. The thing that is not identical is the price. After calculating all the costs that I spent to create my cake stand, the price was $13.96. That's a great savings over our Inspiration piece. I love this cake stand and I love the price. A few of you have requested that I do some coastal DIYs. So our next Pottery Barn dupe is going to be recreating this coral snack bowl. This is very nautical and whimsical. It would be a fun way to display some snacks at an outdoor party. This piece is $34.50, so let's recreate it for less. At the thrift store, I found this coral bowl. It was plastic, it was blue, it was a great shape, and it was a great price. The price was only $2.99. In order to get that craggly coral feel, we are going to add some detail to our coral bowl. So what I got was some Dollar Tree bath salts and some Mod Podge. I painted the Mod Podge onto the coral bowl and then I sprinkled the bath salts right over the top. I discontinued to add the Mod Podge to the bowl and then sprinkle all of this bath salt over the top. The bath salts will stick fantastically to the Mod Podge. So once I was done with the inside of the bowl, I flipped it over and I did the exact same thing on the underside. I put the Mod Podge on there and then I sprinkled the bath salts over the top. I did leave the bottom of the bowl plain because we wanna be able to set it down on a table flat. Once this was finished, I let it dry for an hour. And then I looked at it and I wanted to have a little more detail on there. I needed to have some more coral. So I decided to do a second layer over the top. So I just simply added some more Mod Podge with my sponge brush. I just painted it over the top of the original coral bath salt pieces and sprinkled the bath salts over the top. This makes the coral design even more exaggerated. So once I was done with the inside, again, I flipped it over and I did the underside. Once all of my bath salts were in place, I let it dry for three hours. As an alternative to bath salt, you could use some little pebbles or sand. That would work great too. Now we need to paint our bowl white. 
So I took it outside and I sprayed it in the same white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint that we've used in all of our projects thus far. I made sure that the bowl was completely covered in the spray paint. I did the inside, the outside, and underneath the bowl. Once it was 100% coated in the spray paint, I let it dry for two hours. <laughs> you guys, look at how cool this bowl is. It's got that jagged, uneven feel that real coral has. And if you're worried about this stuff coming off the basalt, it's on there really good. Between all the Mod Podge layers and the spray paint, it's stuck on there really good. So you don't have to worry about the bath salts flaking off all over the place. I absolutely love the way that this looks. You could put some decorative pieces inside. You could put a candle inside. You could put an anchor shell, some nautical decor in there. You could also mimic our inspiration piece and put a glass bowl inside and fill it with some food and put it out at a summer party. How fun would that be? I added up all the expenses and the total cost to create my coral bowl was $10.25. That's a great savings. Do they look absolutely identical? No, but this one definitely has the spirit of our inspiration piece. So for all of you nautical lovers out there that are looking for some coastal design ideas, I hope this works for you. Some of the best thrifted pieces are items that you did not expect to find. Because I had been scouring the Pottery Barn website for a while, I knew what was on there. So when I came across this gorgeous glass pitcher at the thrift store, I knew it was, first of all, it's simply stunning. But secondly, it mimicked a picture that I saw on the Pottery Barn website. The picture on the Pottery Barn website is $99, and mine is only $2.99. I scooped this picture up so fast, not only because it's beautiful, but because I don't have anything like it. Look at how pretty the handle is on this one, and I actually like mine better because of the spout. It has a beautiful dip and curve to it. This would be a gorgeous way to display a specialty drink at a party, or you could just add some of that filtered water and put some lemon slices in it. The difference between the Pottery Barn pitcher and my pitcher is that theirs comes with a stirring stick and I am going to have to use a spoon, <laughs> which is just fine with me. In order to save that much money, I didn't have to pay $99. I paid $2.99 to get mine. So when you're at your thrift store, just look around. You never know what you're gonna be able to find. And these beautiful pieces will elevate the look and feel of your home while staying on a budget. When it comes to shopping, there is nothing quite like the thrill of finding a hidden gem. And that is what I love about thrifting. You can come across a piece that looks ordinary, but with a little bit of transformation can become something extraordinary. I found this large white tray at my thrift store. I loved the size. The cutout detail along the edges is so pretty and the oval shape is unique. And of course, you cannot beat the price of $3.99. In fact, when I went to wash this, I flipped it over and I found out that originally it's from Ikea. So I know that we have saved ourselves a lot of money by purchasing this tray at the thrift store. There are a few things that we need to fix on our tray. The first is that there were some areas where the paint had chipped, and then also there are some rust areas that need to be sanded down and covered up. So I got a fine grit sandpaper and I sanded over the rust areas and also the chip paint so that everything was smooth. And then I washed it off to get all the dust and debris off so it'd be nice and clean for painting. I am going to repaint our white tray white. So I took it outside and I got some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I painted all over the tray. I made sure that the areas that were chipped or rusted got a thorough coat of paint. Once everything was covered in the white spray paint, I let it dry for one hour. Now it's time to spruce up our tray. We are going to do it with some cardstock. I had this book of cardstock and inside was a really, really pretty blue and white rose cardstock. I love this design. I'm going to cut out these flowers. I started off with just a pair of scissors, 
but there was a lot of indents and details that needed to be cut away, so I ended up switching over to an X-Acto knife and a self-healing mat. You can use either one, it'll work both ways. I'm cutting my flowers out individually because one piece of cardstock would not fit across the entire bottom, the oval part, and I didn't want to see a seam where I tried to align the pieces together. So what I'm going to do is just cut away these individual flowers and place them sporadically throughout the bottom of the tray. So once all of my roses were cut out, I did a quick dry run. I added them to the bottom of the tray and moved them around to put them in the correct spot. Then I got some Mod Podge and a sponge brush and I painted the Mod Podge onto the bottom of the tray. I placed my cardstock blue and white roses over the Mod Podge. I continued adding the Mod Podge and positioning the roses on the tray until everything was in place. Then I let this first layer dry for about an hour. Then I added a top layer of Mod Podge over the roses and the tray. I added a decent amount. I want everything to be coated really well in the Mod Podge. This top layer of Mod Podge will protect the tray and the cardstock. It also adds a nice sheen to the top of the tray. Once the Mod Podge had been covered over the entire surface of the tray, I let it dry for three hours. And here is our gorgeous tray all dressed up. I love these roses. They are so pretty. I love the blue and white. And you could use any paper that fits your style or season. The possibilities are endless on this project. There are so many ways that you can display this tray as well. You could put it on a frame stand. You could use it as a tray and put decorative objects on it as well. Because we put Mod Podge over the paper, it's sealed so you could use it for food. I've never seen anything quite like this tray and that is what makes thrifting so special. You can take a regular piece and customize it to your liking and to your style. Sometimes when I'm shopping at my thrift store, I come across pieces and I'm like, why did somebody give this away? Right, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Well, I found an amazing treasure. Look at this gorgeous blue and white ginger jar. I love the size, the detail, the color is so saturated and beautiful. I loved the blue. In fact, there wasn't anything that I didn't like about this jar. And the icing on the cake was that it was only $6.99. So I grabbed that so fast and I brought it home. Don't worry, we are not gonna do anything to this jar. We are gonna leave it as is, but we are going to add some embellishments. So I headed over to Hobby Lobby and I was looking for some white ribbon. The ribbon wasn't on sale in the regular section, so I went over to the holiday section and all the Christmas was 50% off and I found a spool of this white velvet ribbon. So pretty, it was only $5.99 with 50% off. It was only $3, so it was a great bargain. So here's a tip, if you can't find what you're looking for or it's not on sale in your regular everyday section, I always find some basic pieces in the holiday section. So if you wanna find something on sale, look in that holiday section or the clearance section, a lot of times you'll find some things there. So to go along with my ribbon, I needed some fall leaves. So I headed over to the fall section a few aisles over and I found a package of these sparkly leaves they were 40% off, so this package was just over a dollar. I cut a long segment of this velvet ribbon and then I got my sparkly leaves. They are stickers and so all I needed to do was remove the backing over the sticker part and then I pressed it on the ends of the ribbon. Because the knob on my jar is just teeny tiny, I knew that my ribbon would not stay on it. So I got some double-sided tape and I placed it on the knob and then I put the center of the ribbon around the tape. Then I simply tied my ribbon into a bow. You could leave it like this, but we are going to add just a little bit more fall embellishments. When I was at Michael's, all of the florals were 40% off in the fall section. 
So I got a stem of white leaves. I took one of these branches off and then I got a stem of blueberries and I put that over the white leaves. Then I got a segment of floral wire, wrapped it around my stem of leaves and berries. And then I took the excess wire that was coming off of the top, wrapped it around the knob and then tucked it under the ribbon that was around the top of the jar. And then I twisted the wire in the back. You cannot even see the wire that's holding these leaves and berries onto the jar. It just disappears. I love this seasonal touch that we added to the center of the bow. And just like that, we have taken our beautiful ginger jar and themed it into fall. This was so easy to do, but I absolutely love the way that this looks. You could use this technique for every season. You could put some snowflakes on the end of the ribbons for winter. You could do Easter eggs for spring. You could do anchors or flowers for summer. This is such a versatile technique. And again, you could customize the florals that you put in the center as well. I've also done this technique with some pumpkins. I got a navy blue ribbon and then I added some gold leaves to the bottom. So this is a fun way to create some unique custom ribbon for the changing seasons and holidays. Now I'm gonna take my jar and I'm gonna add it to my tray and I'm gonna put the pumpkins on it. I'm gonna put a stem of leaves. I'm gonna add an acorn and it just finishes off this table so beautifully. I love this centerpiece. We were able to create it with items that we purchased from the thrift store that with a little bit of embellishment took these irregular thrifted pieces into spectacular items of home decor. I'm really excited about our next transformation. I guess I should say transformations because there are two of them. I came across these beautiful glass vases. There was a pair of them. I loved the size and the shape. The base had a beautiful tiered detail on it and the price was a screaming deal at $1.99 a piece. We are going to be painting these glass vases and we are not going to be painting the outside. We are going to be painting the inside because we are going to be adding some decorative details to the outside later on. So what I did was I got some blue painters tape and copy paper and protected the outside of the vase. Then I took my vases outside and I sprayed the inside in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the entire inside of the vase was sprayed in the paint. Once both of the vases were coated on the inside with the gold spray paint, I let it dry for one hour. While the paint is drying, we are going to get our design ready. A couple weeks ago, I was organizing my paper napkins in a mesh organizer so I had to go through all of my paper napkins and I found these beautiful blue and white floral napkins that I had purchased a long time ago at Home Goods for only $2.99. And I knew that they would be perfect for this project. Like our cardstock roses that we put on our tray, we are going to be cutting out these flowers individually. The first thing I did was I removed the two ply portion of the napkin and then I got my scissors out and started cutting away these flowers. Now, this took a lot of effort to do. and It was really time consuming. So I enlisted the help of my daughter. She came and helped me cut out all these flowers, which was fun to sit and chit chat with her while we cut all these out. Once I had my desired amount of flowers, I laid them out and then I got my vase, which had been dried and I removed the paper on it. Then I got a sponge brush and some Mod Podge. I painted the Mod Podge onto the vase and then I simply placed my flowers right into the Mod Podge and then smoothed them out. I continued to add the Mod Podge and place the flowers. I love the way that this looks. It carries those beautiful florals from the top all the way to the bottom. After all of my flowers had been Mod Podged onto the vase, I let everything dry for two hours. The reason why I let this first layer of Mod Podge dry for two hours is because the napkin is so thin that if I added the top layer right now, it would just tear the napkin. So we're gonna let it dry. And then after two hours, I came back and I added the top layer of Mod Podge and I put the Mod Podge all over the vase. 
and then I let it dry for an additional two hours. Look at how gorgeous these vases are now. They are unique, they are one of a kind. I could see a vase like this on a very expensive website or in a high-end store. I personally haven't seen anything like this. Now, of course, to finish it off, we've got to put some flower arrangements in our vases. So I got some hydrangea in blue and orangey cream, along with some iris and gladiolas. And I simply just placed them inside the center of our vase. I mimicked both floral arrangements to look just like each other. Check these out now. Look at how beautiful these look. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love it. And to think that these started out as the $1.99 thrifted vases that we added paint and napkins to, and that was it. So it was a really affordable way to create some unique custom pieces. I can use these vases all year long, and all I need to do to theme them into a different season is to change the florals inside. I'm gonna take each one of these and I'm gonna put them on the nightstands in my bedroom to add a little bit of a fall touch to the space. What makes them fall is the color of the orangish cream hydrangeas, and it's still in keeping with the blue and white theme that I have in my room. I was on the Etsy website and I saw this adorable clock. It was so whimsical and unique. I loved the chinoiserie birds. It comes in at a price of $78, which isn't outrageous, but I think that we can recreate one for less. So I headed to the thrift store in the hopes that I could find a similar clock and I found one. This clock is almost identical replica and the price on mine was only $6.99. The orange stain on this clock needs to be changed. And then there's the hardware. There is a pull on the drawer that's copper and the handle on the top is a darker antique color. They do not match, so we are going to change those as well. First up, there is a latch that's on the side, so we are going to remove that so we can paint our clock. I got my drill and I took that latch right off. I began to remove the decorative pull off the drawer. It was nailed into the drawer, so I thought maybe I could just kind of shimmy it off, and I broke it. <laughs> I just, it snapped right in half. So at this point, all I could do was get my needle nose pliers and pull the rest of it off. Once I had the knobs off, I got a putty knife and I jammed it underneath the other part of the hardware and just pried it up. So out of necessity, we will eventually be getting a new knob for the drawer. I didn't know my own strength on this one. All right, so now that we have those parts taken care of, what we're gonna do is remove the clock mechanism from our clock. It had some spring hinges, so it just popped right out. Because I learned a very valuable lesson on the drawer pole, we are not gonna take anything else off. We are gonna leave the handle and the hinges on the clock so we are going to tape those off. So I just got some blue painter's tape and I taped off the hinges and the handle. I got some paper and I put it inside with a little drawer and then got some blue painter's tape and put it over the top because we wanna protect the velvet inside. Now everything's protected, it's time to paint it. Now you guys, <laughs> we are going out on a limb today. and We are painting this clock black, yes black it's not white it's not gold it's black we are going out of our comfort zone so i took my clock outside and i began to spray it in this black semi-gloss rust-oleum spray paint you guys the minute i started spraying this paint my stomach dropped i was like oh i hope i'm making the right decision but i had already started so i just jumped right in and sprayed the entire clock in this black spray paint I did the front of the drawer and all around the clock. I did the top, the sides, the bottom. Once it was completely covered in this black spray paint, I let it dry for an hour. 
Now that everything's dried, we can remove the blue painter's tape. So I just pulled that off of the hinges and the handle and the drawer. Now we're going to put some blue painter's tape back onto the clock. I put it around the hinges and the handle because what we're going to do is get some gold rub and buff and a rag and we're going to add this gold rub and buff to the metal hinges, handle, and hook. I rubbed this rub and buff on the hinges first. I made sure that they were fully covered in the rub and buff. Then I moved on to the handle. I got the base of the handle itself. I made sure that all of it was covered. Once the handle was finished, I moved on to the latch and the screws that we had previously removed. I put the rub and buff all over the latch and the screws. And the nice thing about using the rub and buff is that it's more like a wax. So you don't have to wait more than five minutes to have it dry. So after that time was up, I could remove that blue painter's tape to reveal these beautiful gold metal hardware pieces. I like the way that these look now. Our metal pieces look antiqued and they match color wise. Our inspiration clock had a beautiful chinoiserie bird design. Now we are not gonna go that bright, but what we are gonna do is keep it classic. So I had this book of scrapbook paper that I purchased from Ross a while ago. Inside was this black and cream damask or damask, however you say it, print with a beautiful sheen on it. And these are the scrapbook pieces that we are going to use to cover our clock. I measured the front of my clock to get the correct size. Then I cut my paper to get the correct circle cut out. I placed the paper on the front of the clock, opened it up and traced the circle so I got an exact size. Then I cut out the circle from the paper once I was done, I put it back on the front of my clock and it was a perfect fit. Then I simply cut the scrapbook paper to fit on all the other surfaces on my clock. To adhere the scrapbook paper to my clock, I'm going to be using some Mod Podge and a sponge brush. I painted on the Mod Podge on the front of my clock. Then I took my decorative paper and put it in the Mod Podge. Then I got a scraper tool and I pressed the paper firmly to the wood to make sure that it laid flat. And also this will remove any air bubbles that might be trapped underneath the paper. Then I moved on to the drawer. I did the same thing. I got the Mod Podge. I painted it all over the drawer front and then smoothed it out with my scraper. Next step is to do the sides. So I just repeated the same process. I got the Mod Podge and the sponge brush and I painted it on the sides. I put the rectangular piece on the top first and then moved down to the second rectangular piece on the bottom. Once those had been pressed firmly to the side, I flipped it to the other side and did the exact same thing over there. I added the Mod Podge first. I placed the paper into the Mod Podge then pressed it firmly to the clock with the scraper. Now all of the decorative paper has been Mod Podged onto my clock. Once it was in place, I let it dry for one hour. Now it's time to paint on the top layer of Mod Podge. So I simply just got my sponge brush on the Mod Podge and I painted a liberal amount of this all over the surface of the clock. Now, if I did get any Mod Podge on the clock itself, on the wood and not on the paper, I wiped that off. I wanted to keep the Mod Podge on the paper and not on the clock. Once I had this top layer of Mod Podge coated all over the surfaces of the paper, I let it dry for three hours. Now it's time to replace the broken pole. I had a leftover knob from a previous project a long time ago. It is the cutest little knob. It looks like a flower. It's gold and white, and I think it will look fantastic on this drawer front. So I got my drill again, and I drilled a hole right in the center of the drawer front. Then I took my knob and pressed it through the hole. On the back, I put a washer and a nut to hold it in place. Now we can reattach the latch on the side. I got my drill and I just screwed that right back into place. The final step is to put the clock mechanism back into the clock. This is something that I probably should have tested out first. I don't even know if this works. so. 
let's keep our fingers crossed that it does. I got my battery and I put it into the clock mechanism and thankfully it works, you guys. So not only did we get a great price on this clock, but it's a working clock. So that's a definite score. I just popped it right back into the front of my clock and it sprung into place. I am beyond thrilled with the way that this adorable clock turned out. We have definitely went out on a limb choosing a darker color palette, but I think the black coordinates so beautifully with our decorative paper. The gold hinges, the handle, and the latch add an elegant touch, and I think the new knob is a beautiful accent. Let's look back at our inspiration piece. This clock from Etsy cost $78. After calculating all the costs that went into creating my clock, the grand total was $12.99. What a fantastic price and a great savings over our inspiration piece. I love the way that my clock looks. It has an elegant feel and it's personalized to my taste. It's time for me to share with you what I have been working on for months. I have created a website that sells wall art prints. I absolutely love every single print that is on this website. It's lisaburningham.com and I have curated a collection of prints that I would put in my own home. Every single one of them is classy, timeless, elegant, and would enhance the look and feel of any home. I have botanical prints, landscapes, clouds, contemporary pieces, and seasonal prints. Right now there are over 150 for you to choose from. You can see how beautiful these prints are. They are high quality. I've been working with a graphic designer and we have come up with some fantastic pieces pieces that I know that you will absolutely love. They come in a variety of different sizes. You can select a smaller or a larger size. I also have horizontal and vertical options. All you need to do is select the size in the print that you want and it will be mailed directly to your home. And all you need to do is put it in a frame of your choice. Along with all of these gorgeous prints, I have a newsletter that you can sign up for. And then also there's a section that's a blog. So I'll be posting pictures of my home, some design tips, or just a special message from me to you. This is another way that I can communicate with all of you wonderful people and we can stay in touch and I can show you what I'm working on. So new prints, new art will be coming up all the time especially as we have Christmas coming up. I've got such a great selection of art for you there. Right now I have an autumn collection that's highlighted. I've selected a whole bunch of autumn prints that you could have in your home to make your home feel like fall. I would love to get your feedback on the website. Your opinion is important to me. I appreciate all of you guys so much. So this is a special opportunity for me to share these beautiful prints with you. I hope you love them as much as I do. A way to immediately bring a touch of elegance into your home is with a gorgeous floral arrangement. And you've got to start off with a stunning container. I was browsing through the Horchow website and I saw this beautiful white basin container. It was a great size and I loved the gold accent on the bottom. Since we're on the Hortel website, you guys know it's going to be a little pricey. This container comes in at $485. We are going to do much better than that. A great place to find cheap pieces is at the clearance section. I always browse up and down the clearance aisle. You never know what you're going to find. I was at Home Goods and I went down this aisle and I found this wooden serving bowl. I love the shape of this bowl, the curved edges, and the size. The price was also fantastic at only $15. Okay, first things first, we're going back to my comfort zone of a white spray paint. So I took my bowl outside and I sprayed the underside of the bowl and the sides in the white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the 
bottom of the bowl and the edges were completely coated in the spray paint. Then I let it dry for one hour. After the hour was up, I flipped it over and I spray painted the inside of the bowl, the top edge and the sides once again. Once these areas were completely covered in the spray paint, I let it dry for another hour. Our inspiration bowl had some teeny tiny little feet, so we need to come up with some feet for our bowl. I went to Hobby Lobby and I headed down the hardware aisle and I found some small gold round geometric looking knobs. These are the perfect shape and size and they were only $3.99 a piece. Luckily for us, this bowl is wooden so I can drill some holes through the bottom. So I got my drill and I drilled three holes equidistant from each other on the bottom of the bowl. Then I took my knobs and I twisted them through the hole. Now I made this hole just the right size so that as I twist the knob through the hole, it was really tight. Once all the knobs had been twisted into the holes on the bottom of the bowl, I flipped it over and I added a washer and a nut to the top to make sure that everything stayed firmly in place. And that's it. We are done creating our dupe bowl. Look at how beautiful this bowl looks. I am in love with the shape of this bowl and the size. I love the way that it curves in and out. It's very shapely. The feet on the bottom add that sparkle and shine with the gold and the geometric pattern. This wooden bowl has been transformed into a timeless piece. Let's take a quick look back at our inspiration bowl. If you remember, it was $485. After calculating all the costs that went into creating my bowl, it was only $30, which is a great price. Now, if you look at the Horchow bowl, there is a flower arrangement that goes along with it. However, it's not included in the cost of the bowl. So what we're gonna do is make a flower arrangement you can buy floral inserts and then put them in your own container. So that's what this is. It's a orchid flower insert and it's $166, which is quite expensive. So we're going to make our own. We're gonna start off with some floral foam. Now you guys, I am a reuser of floral foam. I don't think there is anything wrong with floral foam with a little bit of holes in it. It still works out fantastic. So we're gonna put some floral foam in the bottom of our container and yes, it has holes in it, but yes, it will still work. Next step is to take some moss and spread that over the surface of the floral foam. I attached it to the foam with some floral pins. Now it's time for our orchid stems. I purchased mine at Michael's. They were $5.99 a piece, but I had a 30% off all regular priced purchases, which brought the cost down. I took five of these stems and I poked them into the floral foam at various places. Then I bent the flowers at the top. I love doing this because instead of having them go straight up, it adds a nice curve and it also makes the orchids look a little more natural. My orchid stems did not come with leaves, so we're gonna have to get a little creative and come up with an alternative. I think that magnolia leaves are similar to our orchid leaves in this instance. So I got a whole bunch of magnolia stems and I placed them at the base of the orchids. I had a whole bunch of these because I wanted to mimic our inspiration piece really well. I put them throughout the bottom of our arrangement. This orchid arrangement is just what this container needed to elevate it to the next level. It took this container and brought it into a more elegant, a more classic look. This arrangement is timeless. I can use it all year long. I can put it in various areas of my home. I happen to be a lover of orchids and so this arrangement is right up my alley. Our inspiration orchid insert was $166 and after calculating all the costs that went into my orchid arrangement, it was only $35. So we saved ourselves a whole lot of money by duping this ourselves. I love the classic lines, the elegant look, and the timeless feeling it adds to my home. I really enjoy using table runners. I use them all over my house. I think it warms up those tables and it also gives you a place to display some decor. 
So we are going to dupe this runner that I found on the Kirkland's website. This is a very simple but beautiful table runner. It costs $39.99. Again, that's not outrageous, but I know that we can make one for less. So I went to Ross and I found a table runner there. It was so pretty. I loved the cream color and the design on the front was so pretty. But when you flipped it over to the other side, it was plain. So I knew that this was going to be a perfect blank slate to create a runner. And it was a great price at only $8.99. All right, you guys, this is going to be one of the easiest dupes that we have ever done. What I'm gonna do is flip my runner over to the blank slide. I'm going to get some ribbon. This is a beautiful ribbon that has some lace detail on the outside. This is from Michaels. And the third thing that we're gonna need is some fabric glue. I took my ribbon and I put it at the end of the runner. I added fabric glue to the back and pressed it firmly to the table runner. I am going to be using a ruler to make sure that my ribbon stays in the center. We don't want it to get ski wampus as we go down the runner. But all I did was I just continued to add that fabric glue to the ribbon and press the ribbon onto the runner. I did this the entire length of the runner. Once I got to the end, I took some fabric scissors and I trimmed the ribbon and then I added the last bit of fabric glue to make sure that everything stayed in place. And then I let it dry overnight. We are done with this dupe, you guys. How easy was that? But now we have a double-sided runner. So when I get sick of one side, I can flip it to the other. I can use the decorative side or the more simplistic side with one beautiful runner. I placed my runner in the center of my breakfast table and I love the way that it warms up this table. The velvet fabric and the lace ribbon add an elegant touch. I only needed three things to create this dupe, the runner, the ribbon, and the fabric glue. So as a grand total, my cost was $13 which is a great savings over our $39.99 Kirkland's runner. If you're looking for a super simple and affordable project, this runner is right up your alley. You can customize it to your own taste. You can choose a different ribbon. You could choose a different color runner. You could take this in any direction you wanted that would fit in with your design style. Our first piece is going to start off as a silverware caddy. <laughs> I bet you were not expecting that. I wasn't either, but when I came across the silverware caddy at my thrift store, I knew that it had potential, and for only $6.99, I knew I had to give it a try. Now, this silverware caddy is pretty rustic, and it's missing a big chunk out of the finial that's on the top, but that's all right, we can fix it. We are gonna start by changing the color. Now the color right now has some silver and black on it. We are going to switch it and paint it white. So I got some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the entire perimeter was coated in the spray paint as well as the inside and also the top finial. Once the entire caddy was covered in the spray paint, I let it dry for one hour. It already looks so much better. We are gonna take it one step further and add a bit of a glaze to the top. I have this champagne metallic paint. I purchased it at Michael's. This paint is going to provide a lovely sheen and glow to our caddy. I got a sponge brush and I began to paint this champagne paint over the top of the caddy. Once the first side was painted, I got a napkin and wiped off the paint. You're left with a more muted white color, but it also enhances the detail that's on the spoons. I think they look like spoons. I don't know if you think they look like spoons, but in the center of these spoons is this really pretty detail and you couldn't see it before, but by adding this champagne paint over the top, it highlights it so much better. Once the champagne paint had been painted on all four sides and wiped off, I let it dry for an hour. We are not done yet. We're gonna add one more detail and it's going to be a ribbon. I found this white ribbon with gold stripes at Michael's. 
we are going to be using this ribbon to weave in and out of the spoons to create a beautiful basket weave. I started in the center and I took the end of the ribbon and I threaded it through one of the spoons and then I just went back and forth in and out between the spoons. I did this around the entire perimeter. I really love this detail. It makes it look like an elegant basket weave. Once the ribbon had made it all the way back around, I tied it into a bow in the center. Isn't this so cute now? I love the way that this looks. You could definitely use it as a silverware caddy. You could put it on a fall tablescape or a buffet. The neutral color is fantastic. You can use it all year long and you can switch out the ribbon for different seasons. However, we are not going to use our silverware caddy for silverware. We are going to use it for a container for a beautiful flower arrangement. I picked up a whole bunch of flowers at Michael's. All the fall flowers were 50% off. I got some cream flowers, white flowers, and some tall white leaves. Even though our caddy has four different segments, we need a few more for our flower arrangement. So we're gonna create a tape grid. I got some scotch tape and I did two lines vertically and two lines horizontally to create some more spaces for our floral arrangement. And then I took my flowers, I bent the stems and I added them inside of the grids. I placed all of my flowers in various areas along with the leaves and berries. The final addition is this adorable white pumpkin pick. This cute little white pumpkin is going to be a great addition. It will definitely theme this arrangement into autumn. And here's our final floral arrangement. Isn't that just the cutest thing? I love the way that we changed the color on our silverware caddy. Going from the darker black and silver to this white and champagne gold with this ribbon was a great choice. The flowers inside are so pretty. I love the neutral shades of white and creams and the little pumpkin pick adds that autumn detail that we need. I'm going to place my floral arrangement on top of a Marble Lazy Susan in the center of my breakfast table. I'm also going to add a few pumpkins to either side. With a little creativity, we were able to turn a silverware caddy into a beautiful container for a stunning fall flower arrangement. By thinking outside of the box, we were able to make a unique and beautiful arrangement that was very affordable and one of a kind. One of the easiest ways that you can add a seasonal touch to your room is with some pillows. So we are going to embellish a beautiful pillow covering today. I was at Hobby Lobby and they have a huge selection of pillow coverings there. They have a variety of different colors and sizes and very affordable prices. I picked up a linen pillow covering in an 18 by 18 size for only $3.99, which is a great deal. We are going to add a whole bunch of fall embellishments to this pillow covering. The major one that we are gonna add is a big pumpkin in the center. I'm going to create this pumpkin on my Cricut Maker. I went to my Cricut Design Space, I hit New Project, then I clicked on Images, I typed pumpkin in the search bar, loads of options came up. They had a whole bunch of pumpkins to choose from. I scrolled down and I selected this pumpkin right here, then I clicked on Add to Canvas. I sized it to the size that I needed and then I hit Make It. Since I'm using a smart material, I selected without a mat and hit continue. And at this point, you want to make sure you select mirror because this is an iron on design. Then I scroll down and hit continue. I selected my material, which is a smart iron on and then hit more on the pressure. I hit the flashing arrow button, which loaded my gold smart vinyl into the machine. Once it had measured it, I hit the start button, which began the cutting process. Once everything was 100% done cutting, I hit the flashing arrow button, which released my material. Now, all I need to do is weed away the excess vinyl that's around my pumpkin. Then I heated up my Easy Press to 330 degrees and set the timer for 30 seconds. I took my pillow covering, I laid it out flat, and then I grabbed my iron-on vinyl I placed it in the center of the pillow covering 
And then I took my easy press and I put it over the top and hit the start button, which began the countdown. My decal was large enough that I needed to move my easy press around three times. You want to make sure that every part of this vinyl has been heated up appropriately so that it fuses well to the vinyl. Once everything had been fused to the vinyl, I simply removed the protective covering. And now I have my beautiful pumpkin design on my pillow covering. Now you could just leave it like this and it would be beautiful, but we are gonna take it one step further and we are going to add some embellishments to our pillow covering. So while I was at Hobby Lobby, I headed over to the scrapbook section and they had a few packages of beautiful flowers. I got a package of white flowers, they were on sale, and then I also picked up a package of some autumn peaches and mauves, and those were on clearance, so we got our flowers for a great price. I needed some leaves as well, so I headed over to the fabric section looking for some leaves. I couldn't find any, but I went down the ribbon aisle, and I found this adorable leaf ribbon. It was the right color and the right size, and the right price, it was on sale just like everything else. I cut my ribbon to size and then I laid them out on my pillow covering. To adhere the ribbon and the leaves to our pillow covering, we are going to be using some fabric glue. So I added the fabric glue to the back of the ribbons and pressed it firmly onto my pillow covering. And then I moved on to my flowers. I added the fabric glue to the back of the flowers and then pressed them into place on the pillow covering. I mixed up the colors, so I had some peaches and mauves mixed in with the whites. I also mixed up the sizes. I had large, medium, and small ones interspersed along the bottom. Once everything was in place, I let the glue dry for several hours. Finally, I took a down feather pillow insert and added it inside of the pillow covering and then zipped it closed. Isn't this the cutest pillow covering? I absolutely love this. You could put it in the center of your bed. You could add it to a chair, a couch, anywhere you want a bit of fall to be displayed. My color scheme for fall this year is a blue and white, but my mother's is not. She has those traditional orange mauves and peaches, and so I'm going to send her this pillow covering. She loved it and added it to her couch. I told her to put it on her bed, but she said she wanted everybody to see it. <laughs> I love my mother. She's the most adorable lady ever. I'm just so lucky that she's my mom. This pillow covering goes perfectly with the color scheme that she has in her home this year. And hopefully she thinks about me when she looks at this pillow covering. This is such an easy way to create some fall decor for your home. Again, it's one of those items that you can customize to your own color scheme, to your own design, simply by switching out the flowers, choosing a different colored vinyl, or you could even get a more vibrant pillow covering. The choice is yours. I love switching out wall art for different seasons and holidays, so we are going to create some beautiful art in a shadow box. The first thing that I need is a backdrop for our art. Cricut has these huge pieces of scrapbook paper. I selected a cream one and I'm going to cut it to the size that will fit inside of my shadow box. I got a self healing mat and a rotary cutter and I simply cut the scrapbook to size. Next, we need to put in a fall design. So I headed back to my Cricut design space I clicked on new project, I went to images, I typed in pumpkin again. There are a huge variety of pumpkins that you can choose from. I scrolled down, I checked them all out and then selected this one. And then I hit add to canvas. The size was already perfect so I didn't even have to mess with the size. I went over and I hit make it. I selected without a mat because I'm using a smart vinyl and hit continue. Then I hit continue again. At this point, you select your material. I'm doing a smart vinyl permanent. I hit more on the pressure. 
I hit the flashing arrow button, which loaded my smart gold vinyl into the machine. Once it was done measuring, I hit the start button, which began cutting. Once the Cricut Maker was finished cutting, I hit the flashing arrow button, which released my material. Now it's time to cut the second half of the pumpkin. I selected it and then I chose my material and then on the pressure I hit more. To load my material into my maker I hit the flashing arrow button and then I hit the flashing start button to begin the cutting process. Once everything was 100% done cutting I hit that flashing arrow button which released my material. I weeded away the excess vinyl from both of my pumpkin design pieces once they were finished, I got my transfer tape and I put it over the top. I pressed the transfer tape firmly to the vinyl with my scraper tool and then removed the backing. I took my decal and I put it in the center of my scrapbook paper. I used my scraper tool and pressed it firmly onto the scrapbook paper and then I removed the transfer tape. Then I took my second vinyl decal and put that in place. I did the same thing. I pressed it firmly to the scrapbook paper and then removed the transfer tape. Now that my pumpkin is in place, we are going to embellish it similarly to the way that we did our pillow covering. A couple weeks ago, I did a horchow dupe where I used these white dried flowers. I had a couple left over, so we are going to use those. I also purchased some pumpkin picks at the Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree also had some wood leaves. I got a package of those. And then I also have leftover ribbon and leftover leaves from the flower packages that we used on our pillow. I got some hot glue and I began to hot glue all of my elements in place. I put hot glue on the back and then pressed them to the scrapbook paper. Next was the dried rose. I added some hot glue to the back of that and then put it in the center of the leaves. Then I took my wooden leaves, added hot glue to the back of those and pressed them to the scrapbook paper. Then I took the leaf ribbon and added it to the stem. Then I hot glued some smaller dried flowers to the center and finally added more of those Dollar Tree wood leaves to the stem. We only need the pumpkins from our Dollar Tree picks, so all I needed to do was just pull those pumpkins right off the pick. And then at the bottom, I added more leaves and leaf ribbons. I put hot glue on the bottom of the pumpkins and placed them on either side of the dried rows. And finally, I filled in the gaps with more leaves and fall botanicals. Now everything is in place. I think it looks so pretty. I put it right back into the shadow box frame. I just placed it in there, put the backing on the back, and then folded the clamps back in place. You could leave it just like this. It is perfect for a fall centerpiece. However, we're gonna take it one step further and add a corner swag to the top. I put a command hook on the top of the frame. I took a stem of these white leaves that I purchased at Michael's and I shaped it to look like an L. I wrapped some floral wire around it to keep it in this shape. Then I took some of that same ribbon that we used on our silverware caddy and I tied it into a bow. I cut a segment of the leaf ribbon. I added some hot glue to the bow and then put the leaf ribbon in the hot glue. In the center of the bow, I hot glued a large dried rose in place. I tucked in two mini Dollar Tree pumpkins into the wire and then hot glued my ribbon to the center. And then all I did was took the wire that I had wrapped around the center of my stem of leaves and I slid it through the command hook that was on the top. This will hold my corner swag in place. This added detail finishes off this shadow box frame beautifully. It ties in all of the colors that we are using throughout our home. I'm going to place this shadow box on top of my fireplace mantle in my bedroom. The blue pumpkins coordinate so well with the blue and white ginger jars and the other pumpkins and leaves I have adorning my fireplace mantle. I love decorating with trays. They are both aesthetic and functional. I have a variety of trays out right now. I've got five of them and I'm gonna give you five different ways you can style these trays. 
Our first tray is this antiqued brass tray. I love this size, it's really large. A tray this large would be fantastic on a buffet or on a large dining table. The first thing that we're gonna add to our tray is this marble hexagonal tray. Now you can call this a cutting board or a marble slab, but we're just gonna call these marble pieces a tray today. So I'm gonna put this marble on one side. Adding the marble like this breaks up all the brass and gives us a base to put our candle holder on. This candle holder is so pretty. It's got an intricate design on it, so I'll place that on top. And then I have this candle, and it's more of a brass, kind of copper on the outside. And I love how it coordinates with the gold brass tray. I have a trio of ginger jars that we're gonna place on this side of the tray. I'm going to stagger them and arrange them by height. I like to use odd numbers when I decorate, so I have a set of three. And these jars are fantastic because they also have an intricate detail that coordinates with the detail that's on my candle holder. To break up all this white, I'm going to be adding a wooden tassel. I like adding tassels to my jars or to my displays because it's just another really pretty element that you can add. And by adding this more natural beaded garland to this ginger jar, it makes this display feel a little more casual because of the burlap tassels at the bottom. So it tones down the formality. Also, one other tip is that you can always use the lid of a candle as a decorative detail. You can just place it off to the side. I love how this lid coordinates so beautifully with the color of the tray. Our next tray is this mirror tray. I love using mirror trays because they are reflective and they add a little bit of sparkle and shine to your display. The first element that we're going to add is a floral arrangement. Adding natural elements like small potted plants, succulents, or a collection of seashells, these bring a touch of freshness and a connection to nature. The container is also really unique. It looks like coral. I think it's just so pretty. Okay, so next we are going to be using plates. Now plates are a great way to display your collectibles. If you have a set of plates that you really just want to display, putting them on a tray is a fabulous way to do it. So what I'm gonna do is get a frame holder, I'm gonna put it on my tray, and then I can just tuck my plate right into the frame holder. The next plate that we're going to be using is a smaller plate. It has a decorative gold rim around the edges. I'm going to put that right down in the front and on top of that, I'm going to add a candle. Now, just like this display and its tassel garland, I'm going to add a tassel garland to this display. However, the difference is, is that this is a glass beaded garland, so it's going to give it a more classic and timeless feel as opposed to a more casual feel on this tray. So I'm just gonna wrap it around my candle right here in the front and let it hang over the edge. Now we are all finished with this display. I love the way that the mirror tray reflects all of the items that we have on it. I also have a mirror tray in my formal living area. You can see the chandelier above and it also reflects the beautiful florals in that arrangement. This one is one of my favorites. Look at how beautiful this one is. It's got these gorgeous metal leaves. The detailing on them is so pretty and I love this gold color. And what we're going to do is add a marble circle to the center of this tray. Adding this marble slab is going to give this tray stability so when we put our glass jars on it, it's not going to tip anywhere. I have a few glass jars that I have filled up with some yummy snacks. Using glass jars on a tiered tray is fantastic because it adds some sparkle. The glass mixed with the marble and the metal add a unique design touch by mixing and matching these elements. Okay, to the front of my tray, I have some monogrammed cocktail napkins I'm gonna add on one side, and then a monogrammed spoon I'm going to add to the other. This 
display. It would be beautiful on a buffet for a party. It would be so pretty to have on an island in your kitchen or on the center of a table. Marble trays are some of my favorite pieces to work with. Nothing is quite as classy as marble. So we're gonna keep this display classy and elegant. So we have our square marble tray and to the center, we're going to add this scalloped plate. With a gold edge, I'm gonna place that right in the center. And then we're going to layer. So I'm going to get another plate. It's the same plate that we have right here. I have two of them. So this is going to be layered right on top. These match so beautifully. They both have this gold trim around it. And to the center, I have this cut glass candy dish. Now we are not gonna use it for candy today. Instead, I have a candle inside. I'm going to place it right in the center and we are done. Look at how beautiful this display is. It's classic, timeless, and how easy was that to put together? It was a piece of cake. I use marble in a variety of different areas throughout my home. I have marble tiles that I have put on top of buffets and on nightstands. I have marble Lazy Susans on my dining tables and on the large center island in my kitchen. And then I have a few more decorative marble trays that I put on the shelves in my entertainment center. If you wanna add a bit of class, marble is a great addition. Do you guys remember this tray that we found at the thrift store a couple weeks back? We repainted it and decoupaged some blue and white flowers on it. This tray is such a pretty tray and it is the perfect backdrop for us to add some seasonal accessories to it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is add a stem of leaves. On top of our leaves, we're going to add a large plush velvet pumpkin. The ribbon around the stem is so pretty and it themes us into fall fantastically. To the back, we're adding a large ginger jar and I added a stem of leaves and berries to the top. And then in front, we're going to place some pumpkins and a acorn. Using small objects like these little accessories or a small figurine or even a little trinket box is the way that you can add personality to your tray. These objects can be curated based on your personal taste or a specific theme and can be switched out for different seasons. Decorating with trays is an easy, simple, and affordable way to add a high-end look to your home. We're going to elevate the heart of this living space by decorating our fireplace mantle. Now the fireplace mantle decorating tips that I'm using, you can also use on a shelf or on the top of a buffet or dresser. So the first thing that we need is a focal point. My focal point is this large mirror. It's the correct size, it's not too large, it's not too small for the alcove. When you're selecting a focal point, whether it be a mirror like this or a piece of art, you wanna make sure that it is sized appropriately. We are going to layer some pieces on our fireplace mantle. Now we have a mirror above, but we are going to still add some art. I'm going to take this gorgeous fall piece of wall art and I'm going to put it on this side of our mirror. I can just lean it right up against the wall, right in front of my mirror. This more orangish copper frame coordinates beautifully with the fall leaves that are on our art print. This is an art print that you can get on my website and you can still use that 10% off coupon with Lisa 10. So this is going to be on one side, but we need something to balance it out on this side. So what we're gonna do is get a large white urn. This urn is going to add some balance to this side. Because we have something large on this side, we need to equal it out by putting something large on this side. Now in the center, we are going to add some smaller decorative accessories, but before we do that, we're going to get a stem of white fall leaves. 
I purchased these leaves at Michael's. They were 40% off. This is a beautiful backdrop. It breaks up the fireplace mantle itself because they hang below it. I love adding natural touches alike, leaves and flowers to my displays. It brings in that gorgeous touch of nature. Speaking of leaves, I have this acanthus leaf display. I'm going to place it on the mantle right to the side of my wall art print. And then because we are all about symmetry, we're going to add another item that's going to offset this acanthus leaf. I have this gorgeous yellow ginger jar. It's going to tie in some of the yellow from the art print. I'm going to place this jar right to the side of my larger white ginger jar. Because this is a fall display, the center point is going to be this plush cream pumpkin. I tied a transparent gold ribbon around the top. Doing this adds a little bit more of a detail to our plain pumpkin. I'm going to place this right in the center of our mantle as a focal point. The varying heights and the different materials that we're using on this fireplace mantle display makes it look so unique and one of a kind. The layered accessories create depth and visual interest. Let's explore one more fireplace mantle because variety is key. In my bedroom, I have another fireplace mantle display. On this fireplace mantle, I have a trio of ginger jars on one side. To add balance and symmetry, I have a large white orchid floral arrangement on the opposite side. I added these same fall leaves that I got at Michael's on this fireplace mantle and then placed several decorative plush pumpkins over the top of the leaves. I added another gorgeous fall print. This time it has a more simplistic frame around it. This print is also from my website. Changing the decor on your fireplace mantle with the seasons keeps the fireplace area fresh and inviting throughout the year. By combining different elements, we were able to put together a stylish mantle that's visually appealing and balanced. The possibilities are endless when it comes to decorating a fireplace mantle. First, let's go on a little shopping trip to my favorite thrift store. I always find diamonds in the rough at this store. I already had a project in mind, so when I got there, I knew exactly what I was looking for. I needed two large frames. I didn't care what artwork was inside. I was more interested in the frame. I found these on the wall. I really loved the streamline look of the frame and the price was right at $9.99 a piece. So as lovely as these prints are, we are going to be swapping them out. So the first thing I needed to do was remove everything from the frame. So I removed the tape on the back and pulled out the backing with the print on it and then removed the glass as well. So I just had the wood frames. The frame color was similar, but it was not identical. So it needed to be painted. And I'm going to be using this Rust-Oleum Country Gray Chalk Paint. I took my frames outside and I sprayed them in this paint. I made sure that the outside of the frame was painted and the inside was painted as well. And of course the front of once everything was painted in this country gray spray paint, I let it dry for two hours. While the paint was drying, I needed to create some new art to go in my frames. So I created this contemporary landscape on Canva. I created a set of eight because we were going to be creating a gallery in each of these frames. So instead of having a whole bunch of frames all over the wall, we're gonna use these two frames, but we're gonna put four prints in each frame. And the reason why I'm going with this color scheme is that we are going to be making over my twin boys' bedroom. You guys know my boys, they're awesome. They're actually away at a church camp for the week right now. So while they're gone, I thought I'd work on their room so they had a surprise when they got home. So all I needed to do was print off these landscape prints so now that I have my prints done, I wanted to have some mats. So I got some cardstock, just white cardstock, and instead of cutting them out, because eight is a lot of mats to cut out and you want them to be identical, 
I had my Cricut Maker cut them out for me. That way I knew they were uniform. If you're handy with scissors and a ruler and feel like you can do it that way, then totally cut them out by hand. All right, so now we have our prints and we are not gonna keep those prints. We need to cover them up. So we need a neutral backdrop. I'm going to be using some gift wrap. I purchased this at Hobby Lobby. I love this color. It's like a beige and a white stripe. It's a perfect backdrop for our framed art. So what I did is I got some Mod Podge and a sponge brush and I added the Mod Podge to the top of the original art print. Then I took my wrapping paper, which I had cut into the exact same size it needed to go over the top, and I placed it over the top of the Mod Podge. Then I got a scraper tool and I pressed those two pieces together. Doing this also removes any of the air bubbles that might be trapped inside so that the paper can lay flat. Once the paper was in place, I let the Mod Podge dry for two hours. Now I have all of my pieces, so let's assemble. I'm going to take my art print and then get the mat. I'm gonna get some double-sided tape and place it over the top of the paper and then put my mat over the top of that. I cut my mat to fit exactly over a eight and a half by 11 size piece of copy paper. That way I didn't have to do any additional cutting. I repeated this process with all eight of my art prints. Then I took the backing that was covered in the gift wrap and I added my prints to the top. I spread them out equally. Then I got some hot glue and I hot glued these prints directly to the backing. I did this with the remaining art pieces until my collage of modern landscapes were in place. And then I did the exact same thing with the other four pieces on the second piece of art. And now all I need to do is slide them back into the original frames. I hung one above each of their beds in their bedroom and I absolutely love the way that these turned out. And you guys, we did not use any white or any gold spray paint on this project. Uh, way out of my comfort zone. Who am I right now? I don't know, but I think it looked beautiful. I loved this gray color scheme with the muted color tone. And they started out as a pretty questionable a $9.99 thrifted piece. I love decorating with glass jars. So anytime I see them at my thrift store, I save them up, especially when the price is $9.99. And guess what? I have an identical one, an identical match. Isn't that crazy? And let me tell you, I spent a lot more than $9.99 on this jar. So now I have a pair. I decorate with glass jars all year long. I do it in the spring, summer, fall, especially at Christmas time. And there are so many ways that you can decorate your glass jars. Let me show you a quick, easy one right now. So what I'm gonna do is take my glass jar and I have a pitcher of water. I'm gonna pour it into my jar. And then I have some flowers. These are flowers that I just picked from outside. So pretty and all you need to do is take fresh flowers and put them inside of the water in your jar. Just put in as many as you want. You can use a variety of different colors that would go along with a color scheme that you were having for a party. You could get some pretty flowers that coordinated with the specific season that we're in. So I'm just gonna add a whole lot of flowers to my jar. And that's it, we're done. How simple is that? Go look at how pretty this set of three glass jars looks. In the spring, I put some bunnies in a jar. In the summer, I had a bee-themed tablescape and I put some bee-themed items in my jar. In the fall, I put in some pumpkins and acorns in jars. And of course, at Christmas time, you can do so many things. I put in little village houses, 
bottle brush Christmas trees. I've even put a Santa in a glass jar. So if you see a jar at your thrift store or if it's on sale somewhere, scoop it up because it is a versatile piece of decor that you can use all year long. Just remember that you can live beautifully every single day in your own way and you can do it on a budget. All you need is a little bit of creativity. If you like this video and want to see more like it, I would love to have you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.